While most people don't love jury duty, they do understand the importance of taking part in their civic responsibility. But there are times when you simply can't serve, either because of personal hardship or physical or mental limitations that make jury service difficult, if not impossible, to perform. If you are living with bipolar disorder, you may assume that it automatically excludes you from sitting on a jury. In some cases, you may be right, particularly if you're on disability and unable to work. But is it always the case? The simple answer is maybe. The laws governing jury duty vary from state to state, county to county, and even district to district. So, if you're suddenly facing a jury summons and feel unable to serve, you will need to identify the local laws applicable to you and make further inquiry if the rules seem unclear. State laws regarding jury duty and mental illness laws can be notoriously vague when it comes to defining mental illness within the context of jury duty. An informal snapshot of current state and local laws shows how diverse the exemption process can be. In Massachusetts, you may request an exemption if a doctor confirms in writing that your mental illness makes it impossible to sit on a jury. Point one in California, the same guidelines apply for everyone under age 70. People 70 and older do not require a doctor's note. Point two in Hawaii, a medical certificate must be submitted as proof of mental illness. Point three even so, it is not a guarantee that your request will be approved. In parts of North Carolina, you must submit a signed statement by a licensed physician on an official letterhead setting forth a diagnosis, a prognosis as to the time the mental condition is expected to continue, and an explanation as to why you are unable to perform jury duty. Point four in Delaware, you need only fill out a questionnaire to provide evidence of undue hardship, extreme inconvenience, or public necessity, in order to be excused. Point five in Wisconsin, the court may or may not require documentation for your condition depending on your circumstances. Point six how to get excused if you feel unfit to sit on a jury, there are several things you can do. If you are perfectly comfortable submitting for an exemption based on your mental illness, speak with your doctor and see if he or she can put together the bulk of the documentation for you. These requests are not uncommon in medical practice, and the office staff may have experience in how to expedite the process more efficiently. If the doctor is unable or unwilling to help, call the helpline listed on the summons, advise them about your condition, and ask them for advice on the fastest and easiest way to get an exemption. If they understand your distress, they will usually make more effort to help. If you have an important medical appointment, such as therapy, a doctor visit, or a regular support group meetings, you can often get excused on the grounds that jury duty will interfere with those appointments and pose extreme inconvenience to your ongoing care. Point seven. If you are unable to get excused prior to jury duty, request to speak with the judge upon arrival. If you speak as a human being rather than a prospective juror, you can explain what is going on with your health, including the drugs you're taking, and simply advise the judge you are unable to concentrate. That's usually enough to be granted an excusal. Alternately, if you are just going through a rough time now and want to serve, you can request a change of date. Point seven. These are almost always granted. Whichever way you choose to handle this, do not lie or provide false evidence. Doing so may result in a perjury charge and a hefty fine. Point eight, be honest and turn to your support system for help in gaining fair and reasonable exemption from court service. Just take it one step at a time.